Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the cabinet meeting of the 20th of January 2022 uh, and this is our first meeting of the new year so I hope everybody had a good Christmas and New Year break. Uh, so we'll go straight into the, the meeting with apologies for absence. I've received apologies from uh, Alex Farrell and Rob Pritchard. Uh, Rob Pritchard is due to a uh, Covid test and therefore that needs to be recorded appropriately uh, in, the, in the attendances. Uh, minutes of the previous meetings, uh, we held two meetings since uh, we've approved the minutes and that's the 2nd of December and the 16th. Uh, happy to move those to the true record, do I have a seconder? Marie has seconded, sorry Councillor Bailey has seconded. All those in favour? That is unanimous, thank you very much. Uh, item 3 on the agenda, uh, declarations of interest. I've had none given to me before the meeting. Are there any interests to declare? No, excellent. We're moving to item four on the agenda, uh, which is uh, question time. And this evening we have one question from Mr. Loxton. Mr. Loxton, would you like to come forward and ask your question? On page 10 of the draft budget and medium term financial strategy 2022-23, including in this evening's meeting, it states, and quote, is income from the commercial forward slash industrial portfolio has held up during the pandemic, but underlying market issues and the increase in online shopping increased by the pandemic mean that there is an immediate risk in relation to the income achievable from the council's commercial property portfolio, including the Ankerside Shopping Centre and NC NCP car park, while not known at present, could result in a significant loss of income, end quote. While I can understand the NCP car park issue as the council owned the land, could you please confirm what commercial property is owned by the council in relation to Ankerside Shopping Centre? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Loxton. Uh, Councillor Bailey, portfolio holder for finance, would you like to respond? Certainly. Thank you, Mr Loxton. I can confirm that Tamworth Borough Council owns the freehold. Um, Fanker side. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Mr. Loxon, do you have a supplementary? Okay, so if Tamworth Book Council owned the freehold, that means the person in charge of the Anchor side leases the building from Tamworth Council. Is that right? Or, yeah. Okay. I mean, the only reason I asked the question is obviously trying to be careful what I say um, when people talk about Ankerside um, and the council it always seems to be that Ankerside has nothing to do with the council so this would seem to suggest otherwise now obviously if Tamworth Council's got the freehold Tamworth Council would want Ankerside filled as much as possible because if it's doing well um, that's good for the council because they've got the freehold um, so I just think it, it's a bit of a surprise to see that they hold the freehold. So do you think the council have led the public or or made the public think that they don't have anything to do with Ankerside from what they've said in the past? Thank you. Councillor Bailey, would you like me to respond? Yes, please. Okay. The freehold owned by Tamworthborough Council relates to the land that Ankerside stands on. Tamworthborough Council have no responsibility uh, for the building and have no role in running of, of the shopping centre or car parks. So the commercial viability uh, and usage of those stores has no impact on the Borough Council's income from the freehold and the Borough Council has no influence on the, on the use of the, uh, of the stores within Ankerside. Okay, thank you, Mr. Loxton. Okay, item five on the agenda uh, matters referred to cabinet in, in accordance uh, with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. Uh, we do have with us this evening the Chairman of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Committee, 
Uh, however, the recommendations that he will be bringing relate to item 10, I'm going to say, yes, item 10 on the agenda, uh, and so we will call the chairman at the appropriate time to feed in when the report is presented. It brings us on to item 6 on the agenda, which is the budget and medium term financial strategy. Uh, I'm going to be extremely brief on this because you guys have all been involved in putting this document together. This is the latest iteration uh, of the draft budget uh, and, uh, and an MTFS uh, going forward. This report here will go forward to scrutiny uh, or to a scrutiny forum uh, next week where all members of the council can uh, uh, probe or scrutinize uh, the proposals within there. It is draft, it isn't complete, there are still tweaks to be made uh, and we're still getting uh, requests for policy changes and suggestions from uh, from non-cabinet members uh, which we'll have to consider uh, as we go forward. Um, so that's all I wanted to, to say on that this evening. We'll be uh, fully discussed next week uh, with all councillors. Uh, so I'm happy to move the two recommendations and that the cabinet uh, approve the draft package of budget proposals including proposed policy changes uh, and as required in the constitution the joint budget scrutiny uh, in this case a forum uh, will meet on the 26th of January uh, and will be requested to consider the proposals contained within this report. Uh, happy to take any questions and move those recommendations. Okay, do I have a seconder? Councillor Bailey was on it. So Councillor Bailey seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to item 7 of the agenda which is the business rates income forecast uh, and that's councillor marie bailey portfolio order for finance and customer services thank you so the report sets out the forecast business rates to be received in 2021 2022 and 22-23 as included within the nndr1 and returning to the mhclg which will also inform the council and its preceptors budget projections for 22-23 I won't go, hopefully everybody's read the report, so I won't go into any more detail of that apart from to move the recommendations that one, members approve the business rates income forecast for 22-23 and subsequent N NDR1 form for submissions to MHCLG by the 31st of January 2022 in line with the scheme of delegation. Two, should material amendments be required to forecast NNDR1 Cabinet authorises the Executive Director of Finance in consultation with the Leader of the Council to make such required amendments as necessary and members note discretionary relief granted to qualifying bodies in line with the existing policy. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Bailey. Um, any questions of Councillor Doyle? Is he the only one apart from me that's here? <laughs> um, have you moved that Councillor Bailey? Yeah, okay, um, it's uh, it's essential that we do this because, uh, like ourselves, uh, the other precepting authorities in the area need to have an idea how to set their their budgets and uh, a reliance on this report in order to do so. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Doyle seconds. Uh, all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to item eight, which is the Amington. This table creaks every time I lean on it. Uh, the Amington Community Woodland Review uh, and this is uh, the report of the portfolio holder for Environment, Entertainment and Leisure, Councillor Pritchard, who has sent his apologies. Uh, so having been through the report, uh, this is an update on the Amington Community Woodland project which forms part of the Amington Golf Course and members will see there are five recommendations there uh, which detail the funding and the pulling together uh, of, of, uh, of number of pots. Uh, so we can realise th th this project and, and, and get this completed. Um, I have no further uh, comments to make on that. Uh, I don't know if our officers want to uh, feed anything in. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to add to uh, what you've said, is this is a refresh of a report that came to Cabinet previously in 2019 
when the report in 2019 also identified some European funding that we were bidding for at the time. But with the pandemic and Brexit, that funding is no longer available. So the funding pot that is available for the project is slightly smaller than it was previously. But this report just bring, refreshes all of the figures now that the Section 106 has been received by the Council with a relevant indexation that comes with it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Okay, there are five recommendations uh, in front of us uh, and I'm happy to move those on block. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Doyle seconds. All those in favour? Okay, thank you very much. That is carried. Uh, brings us on to item nine of the agenda which is the statement of common ground with Litchfield District Council brackets planning uh, and this is the report of the portfolio holder for skills, planning, economy and waste. Councillor Doyle. I do apologise for the microphone. Uh, I believe uh, the officer Richard Powell has done an excellent job on uh, the report and some of the background notes that he supplied were really, really spot on and, and will consist, f to be honest, for the majority of what I've got to say. So the purpose of the report is uh, to delegate authority is sought from Cabinet to allow the Assistant Director for Growth and Regeneration to negotiate and agree to a common statement statement of common ground between the Council of Litchfield, District Council and Tamworth Borough Council to issues surrounding the Litchfield District Local Plan for 2040. LDC are currently working on a new local plan strategy for developments in the district. In July and August of 2021 they carried out a public consultation on the version of the document that they intended to submit to planning to the Planning uh, Inspectorate for examination with a view to adopting a new plan in autumn of 2022. Tamworth Borough Council responded to the consultation raising concerns on a number of points including a lack of highways evidence and that the duty to cooperate had not been sufficiently complied with and we've discussed this previously in uh, Cabinet as well. This second point was significantly influenced by developments on the Tamworth border in particular with Arkwell Farm de uh, development. Whilst the lack of highways evidence is a technical issue that can be considered during the examination, the duty to cooperate is a statutory requirement that could prevent the plan from progressing to examination. This wouldn't be an ideal situation for Tamworth because if LDC doesn't have a plan, an up-to-date plan in place, it would open the door to speculative developments close to the border with Tamworth which LDC may struggle to refuse and we've been in a similar situation ourselves in the past. Litchfield District Council are therefore seeking to enter into a statement of common ground with the Council in order to overcome the duty to cooperate concerns. The duty to cooperate is not a duty to agree. However, as well as setting out uh, issues on which their two councils agree, the statement of common ground would also set out those areas on which further work between the two councils is required. So, uh, I recommend to Cabinet is Cabinet delegate authority to negotiate and sign a statement of common ground with Litchfield District Council to, uh, to the Assistant Director of Growth and Regeneration in consultation with the Portfolio Holder for Skills, Planning, Economy and Waste. And can I work on my title? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, basically that's the recommendation that I move to Cabinet. Okay, thank you, Councillor Doyle. I'll take my mask off again. <coughs> uh, thank you, Councillor Doyle. Um, as you mentioned, it's uh, we, we've previously discussed uh, planning matters and uh, and the challenges uh, with building on our borders. Uh, I also remember being in this very room. Oh, I think it was 2000, June 2004, uh, when I suggested that uh, uh, a local plan uh, may have gaps in it uh, and uh, and we need to fill them. Uh, and the response I got off the then 
opposition group was yes but at least have the bravery to try uh, now I think we're 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 not in that reckless phase anymore and uh, and I think what you brought this evening Councillor Doyle is a step in the right direction in terms of rebuilding our relationship with our neighbours uh, what one thing I do know about uh, about being in local authorities is very often it's about relationships and we need to have good relationships with our with our neighbours to ensure we get the the best deal for the people of Tamworth uh, so yeah this is certainly a, a step in that direction so are there any other questions or comments from Marie? Yeah. Uh, in that case, you've moved the recommendation. I'm happy to second that. Do you want to say, say anything else, Mr. Dill? Um, I definitely agree with what you say, and in it's in our own interests because it gets, to a certain degree it protects us, but it still leaves uh, certain things that we need to discuss with Litchfield. But thank you. Yeah, exactly. There's still there's still a relationship to build, and there's still some lines we need to draw in the sand. Yeah, uh, but no, you've moved that, so I'm happy to second that. All those in favour? Okay, that is unanimously carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to item 10, uh, which is the curtain wall tender, and that's a portfolio holder for skills, planning, economy, and waste. Councillor Doyle. Thank you. Um the purpose of the report is to seek approval for, uh, of expenditure above the 100k limit f uh, from a secured budget for the purpose of completing essential capital works at Tamworth Castle. In summary, Tamworth Castle's condition uh, report from 2019 identified that serious and urgent remedial works are, were required to the curtain wall. This is the external perimeter wall that extends around the castle. The recommendation at the time was to immediately cordon off the area as the likelihood of falling masonry was high and therefore the potential to injure a member of the public was significant. Work has been delayed due to the pandemic. The area continues to remain closed and as such prevents visitors from enjoying the circular path around the castle and the views from the summit. Staff have worked with Purcell uh, Architect to scope a range of options for the capital works but given the urgency of the works. Uh, the rising costs and the need to mitigate financial risk. The recommendation is the work commences on the imme uh, immediate repairs only. If no action is taken, the condition re uh, report advises that there will be inevitable further deterioration of the historic fabric with an expect expectation of falling masonry and a high risk of injury to the public. Budget has already been secured to carry out the work uh, through the capital scheme budget. The costs, uh, costed works for to complete the program of repairs has been estimated at pre-tender stage to be around three, over 300,000. This work will ensure that the historic fabric of the buildings is restored and Tamworth Borough Council's health and safety obligations are met, allowing the perimeter to be safely reopened to the public. Due to the nature of the works and rising costs, a cautious approach to budget management is proposed and the lowest costed option and no additional works included. Appendix A uh, provides the costed options. Option 6 is the lowest costed option, which it is proposed becomes the scope of the tender. Uh, in terms of resource implications, the capital scheme has a total budget of 400k, which was approved for spend in 2021's budget and in 21-22's budget. Spend has already been committed on structural surveys to support the conditions, uh, the conditions survey and an art architect fees in drawing up plans and schedule of works to support the tendering process, leaving a budget of over 300,000. The next steps in the process will be for the consultant, consultant team to prepare a tender which will be reviewed by the Borough Council's procurement team. It is in it is expected that work will take approximately six months and will commence upon a, a successful tender process. There will be no operational changes to the castle during the works and it will continue to open as normal. So the recommendation is, is approval is given to tender to market for the proposed capital works. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, prior to uh, this coming before us this evening, this report has been submitted to uh, Infrastructure, Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. Uh, so I'll take this opportunity to invite the chairman of that committee to uh, present what the uh, what the outcomes of that discussion were. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, so yeah, the current war tender report was brought before ISAG um, at last night's meeting. And uh, following on from the presentation and detailed discussion, the scrutiny committee felt that to shore up the process, provide some reassurance and possibly avoid some potential issues, that the um, following recommendations should be brought forward to Cabinet for consideration. So um, recommendation one is that Cabinet instruct that the contracted castle architects act as external quality assurance for the works. And um, recommendation two is that the previous contractor's performance be taken into account in the tender appraisal. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Daw, do you want to respond to those points at this stage? Yes. Um, first off, I'd like to offer an apology because I didn't, I wasn't aware that this was coming to scrutiny last night. Otherwise, I'd have been there myself. I do have a tendency to turn up when there's an item there that's from my portfolio, so I apologise on that one. Um, I wholeheartedly support scrutiny's uh, recommendations. Thank you. No questions, just obviously it's something that's, that's got to happen, hasn't it? Because there's a health and safety issue there. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, if I, if I may, Councillor Doyle, uh, just very quickly, uh, you have highlighted it, it is in the report, uh, and I'm merely repeating this because a number of members of the public have contacted me with some confusion as to which wall we're talking about, and it's the actual castle itself and the exterior wall around the one side of the castle and if people go up there they'll notice that's been cordoned off for, for some time now. Uh, a number of members of the public were, were confused between the herringbone wall and work's been done to that. This is not, this is the castle itself uh, and that exterior wall which you can walk around on a uh, on a normal day when it's fixed. So I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, it is in the report, you, ha you have covered it, Councillor Dorn. Uh, if I may, uh, I'd like to uh, very quickly change uh, the or propose uh, a motion which differs slightly from the motion in the report uh, and I'll move this I'll move uh, recommendation one as printed uh, recommendation two uh, I would like to change that uh, so consideration is given to allocating uh, 70,000 pound from capital contingencies budget uh, in addition to the budget already secured for this project to allow the necessary works to take place and to achieve the cost saving over time and the reason I want to do that is because if the, you read the rest of the report there's a 70k variance between the budget and what is anticipated uh, and if we uh, approve the 100k that gives 70 plus a contingency from a contingency uh, so, so that's why I'd like to reduce that to 70 uh, I'd also like to move recommendation three as printed however add a fourth recommendation uh, that cabinet consider a specific contingency for the castle curtain wall of 30k to be included in next year's budget preparation uh, and that both recommendations from infrastructure safety and growth uh, that is that the uh, current uh, architects uh, contracted architect for the castle uh, acts as quality assurance for the works and that when tenders are received previous performance of those people tendering is taken into consideration so we've gone from three recommendations to um, five recommendations and recommendation two is changed from 100k to 70k I move do I have a seconder Councillor Doyle has seconded that thank you councillor any further questions or comments before I move to the three of us voting no in that case all those in favour that is carried. Thank you very much, and thank you, Councillor, for bringing those recommendations. Thank you very much. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the agenda this evening. So thank you for your time, and thank you for your input, both councillors, officers, and uh, members of the public. Uh, and I wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you very much. Good night.